Hi, this is Miss Cairo here. We're on page 134, continuing. This is the end part of lesson 4-6, which is multiplying a whole number times a decimal. So at the very top of page 134, the heading is zero patterns in decimal places. And then it says, you have seen patterns in multiplying by multiples of 10. You have seen patterns in multiplying by decimals. You can use these two patterns together. The table below shows how you can multiply decimals by whole numbers using ones, tens, and hundreds, and tenths, hundredths, and thousands. And to quickly go over this table, we have factors of 2, 2200, and 3 tenths, 3 hundredths, and 3 thousandths. And just like it was seeing up here, we um, have been learning, or we have already learned, the patterns on how to solve um, when multiplying with factors that end in a zero. Remember, we add on the zeros to, we ignore the zeros and then add them on. And now we're noticing patterns for multiplying decimals in which we count the number of decimal places in the factor and we place the number of decimal places in our product. And we're going to mesh the two. So briefly um, previewing this, let's take a look at this first box, which is two times three tenths. What the table did is rewrote it, so two times three tenths, and then they broke apart, they ignored any zeros and ignored any zeros, sorry, ignored any zeros and ignored any decimals and rewrote out the digits within this, the multiplication problem. So for in this case, it would be two times three, and then they multiplied, um, in this case, two, it was two ones, so we can just leave two by itself. Two ones times one is just two. But three, we're going to multiply the place value in which three is. And three is in the tenths place value, the place value right after the decimal. In between the ones and the tenths, right after the decimal is the tenths. So one tenth is represented by, um, in this place value, three times one tenth gives us three tenths. And then they um, kept the decimal here and they multiplied out the whole numbers just like we've been practicing. So the whole numbers left in this problem is two times three, which is six. And then six times this decimal place value, one tenth. There's one decimal place here, one decimal place in our answer of six tenths. Kind of complicated, but they're basically just breaking apart all the place values and then multiplying up the whole numbers and then adding in the place values. It gets more complicated when we deal with a factor that has a zero and a factor that has a decimal. So let's take a look at this box, 20 times 3 tenths. Well, dealing with the first factor of 20 to break apart into place values, we have the digit here, 2, so they brought, um, brought down the 2. 2 times what equals 20? Well, 2 is in the tens place value, so 2 times 10 is equal to 20. So that's what they rewrote down here. And then dealing with the next factor of 3 tenths, again, they ignored the decimal and they just looked at the digit of 3. 3 times, well, 3 is in the tenths place value, so 3 times 1 tenth gives us 3 tenths. So they wrote out that multiplication sentence. We're going to ignore this decimal over here, and we're going to multiply all our whole numbers. So um, ignoring actually this 10, 2 times 3 we already said is 6. And 6 times 10, we know 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 zero gives us 60. And then we have 60 times 1 tenth. That was what we ignored over here. One place value, one place value to give us 6 ones. Complicated, but let's try it out um, moving farther along into the page. Again, we're on page 134. So um, numbers 27 through 31, the directions say find each product using the method shown in the table above. Um, we're not going to write out every single step um, for time-wise. I'm just going to walk you through it. And again, we're going to be working with um, the two patterns that we've been learning in which multiplying by factors that contain a zero and factors that contain a decimal. So let's just take a look at number 27, four times two tenths. 
Remember, the first step in solving a multiplication problem that involves a decimal is to ignore the zeros and um, multiply as if you're multiplying a whole number. So what I noticed in yesterday's lesson is, well, four is already a whole number, so we already have that. What I noticed is we're struggling, some of you are struggling with how do we write two tenths as if it's a whole number? Well, if we ignore the zero, sorry, if we ignore the decimal, we get this number, okay? It should be just two holes. Um, in math, when we're writing out numbers, if we're writing out a whole number, for example, like 23, we would never put a zero before it because it has no value. So we would just drop it. So for this two holes, we don't need to write out that zero. So that zero that's in the one spot, we're just going to replace, just drop it. Two tenths, rewritten as a whole number, is just two. Okay, so really notice and think about what do those zeros mean and is it necessary for you to write them out. In this case, it's just a placeholder. It's just showing the reader that we have a number that's less than one whole. It doesn't have any value. So I just rewrote it as two, four times two. Go ahead and write that on the line. We ignore the decimal. Um, is equal to eight, but that's not our problem here. So it's four times two tenths. Next step is we're gonna underline how many decimal places are there in our factors. For two tenths, remember decimal places is anything to the right of the decimal. So anything, any digits that are in the tenths, the hundredths, or the thousandths place value. And again, I just told you that there's one decimal place value here. But yesterday, some people were saying, for example, this problem, this number, two tenths, some people were saying that there is two decimal place values, for example, for this one. That is incorrect. So two tenths, if I write it into my place value, again, I'm looking for any digits to the right of my decimal. So we always find our decimal. And again, we always look to the right, this direction the tenths, hundredths, or thousandths place value. And we only have one digit to the right, it's digit two, it's in the tenths place value, one decimal place. This ones is a whole number. This doesn't count as a decimal number. This one is to the left. These are all whole numbers. Okay, so one decimal place value over here. We can even draw that little one up here that we were doing yesterday. One decimal place value in our factors means how many decimal places in our product? One. So we only have one digit here, so we're gonna underline that eight, just our only digit. This needs to be a decimal number, or a decimal place value. So we're gonna put, underline one digit, and then put the decimal beforehand, before it. Now we have eight tenths, and again, anytime you have, um, just decimal numbers, we always put a zero in the one spot to tell our reader this is a number that's less than one whole. Eight tenths is written zero decimal eight. Let's move on to number 28, five times six tenths. Let's, let's see if you can do it. So I'll start you off. We're gonna multiply as if the decimal's not there. So five is already a whole number. How do we write, rewrite six tenths as a whole number? I'm gonna ignore that decimal, so then I have zero six. Again, that zero has no place value or no um, value to it, so we're just gonna write a six. Six tenths written as a whole number is just six. Five times six is equal to 30. We're not done quite yet. There's how many decimal places in our factors? Let's underline them, just one. And I'm going to write the one up here. So how many decimal places does there need to be in our answer? One. So we're going to underline, starting with the very right. Zero is our first digit. I'm going to underline it. There's one decimal place value. And then place a decimal in front of that digit. Now we have three and zero tenths. Well, three and zero tenths is just equal to three. Three ones. Five times six tenths is equal to three. Do you have that in your book? Okay, now for 39, we're working with a number that contains a zero times a decimal. So we're gonna combine these two patterns that we've been looking at for the last few lessons. 
first step is we're going to ignore the decimals. So um, I'm going to ignore this decimal here in six hundredths. Um, and 40 is already a whole number. So I'm going to rewrite 40 times. We wouldn't write 007. We would just write, rewrite it as 7. Ignoring the decimal for 7 hundredths is 7. 40 times 7. 40 times 7, we know to ignore the 0. Multiply 4 times 7 and then add 1 0. So 40 times 7 is... 4 times 7 is 28, plus 1, 0 is 280. We're not done, though. We have how many decimal places in our factor? So I'm going to underline any decimal places after or to the right of the decimal. For 7 hundredths, there is 1, 2, two decimal places over here. So how many, two, how many decimal places for 280 do we need? Two. We're going to start on the right. We're going to underline the 0 and the 8. So you always start the last digit, underline, underline, decimal. And we get our answer of 2 and 80 hundredths. Let's keep going. Number 30, 300 times 3 tenths. Again, ignored the decimal. And we get 300 times. Ignoring the decimal for 3 tenths is just 300 times. 3. What's 300 times 3? Three? 3 times 9, sorry, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 zeros is 900. How many decimal places did we ignore? There's one decimal place in our factors. There needs to be one decimal place in our product. We're going to start on the right, underline that first zero, add in the decimal, and we get 90 and 0 tenths, or just 90 as our answer. Thanks for following along so closely with me. Last one, 200 times 8 hundredths. Can you solve it? Go ahead and try it. First step is ignoring the decimal. So we're going to multiply out 200 times 8. 200 times 8 is 16 plus 2 zeros gives us 1,600. We have to go back and add in some decimals. How many decimal place values were there in the factors? 1, 2. How many decimal place, factor, place values does there need to be in our product? 2. Starting with the right, we underline 1, 2. Add in our decimal. 16 and 0 hundredths or just... 16 for number 31. Great job.